about a year ago, I was in a church meeting where an ecclesiastical leader who I trust said, I am encouraging everyone here, and there were probably about 500 people in attendance at that meeting, I'm encouraging everyone here to purchase earthquake insurance on their home. Now, so that was kind of a strange thing to say. Uh, this man has never been a an alarmist, never said anything that I thought was out of the ordinary, but I thought that was a strange thing to say. So I went out the next Monday morning and called my insurance company and asked them uh, if I could buy earthquake insurance on my home. And the person on the other end of the line kind of chuckled and said, well, there's there's no need for earthquake insurance where you live. There's no risk. And I said, so are you telling me you won't sell me earthquake insurance? He said, oh, no, I'll sell you anything you want. I said, good, put an earthquake rider on my home. How much is it going to cost me? He looked it up. He said, well, it's only going to cost you $39 because there's no chance of earthquake in your ass. I said, that's great. Put it on. So he did. And, uh, you know, he chuckled all the way through that application. And I've had earthquake insurance since that day. And I've got to tell you, something interesting happened about a week and a half ago. I got something from my insurance company. I don't know if you can see this right here. It says, um, important information regarding the earthquake deductible on your policy. And I've highlighted some important portions of it. And I'm going to read them to you. It says, uh, on a periodic basis, our company reviews its exposure to catastrophic events. Based on a recent review of our earthquake exposure in Missouri, we've determined that it's necessary to implement higher earthquake deductibles on our policy. Effective 521.11, your current earthquake deductible will go from 10% to 15%. Please note, this change applies to your earthquake coverage only, no other deductible will be impacted by this change. Now I'm telling you, there's been a lot of talk about earthquake and storms and um, tornadoes and the like. And you're very familiar with that if you're, if you're a member of the prepping community. Makes me a little nervous. Especially living here in Missouri, of course, you know the New Madrid Fault runs right up through uh, the eastern side of Missouri. Uh, I'm pretty far away from that, but when the 1812-13 earthquakes took place, it rattled windows in Kansas City. It rang church bells in Boston. Uh, in fact, uh, shaking was felt up into Canada. And the Missouri River ran backwards for a few days. So I'm just, um, I'm just a little bit nervous. And they say that, uh, you know, the New Madrid's due to shake again. So I've just kind of been taking some preliminary precautions, uh, especially where my canned goods are concerned, those canned goods that, are, that I've home canned in glass jars. And I want to share with you a little bit about, about that. I know it's kind of strange to be showing a living room, but I'm talking about homeowner's insurance, so, or at least that's how I started, so I thought I'd let you see something different than my kitchen table, which is what you usually see, and thought I'd focus on that pretty country home over there that I dream about living in. So, let me get to a place where I have some canned goods store, and I'll tell you a little bit more. Uh, sturdy shelf my husband built me. We just took up a, uh, an entire bedroom we didn't use. Uh, they're beautiful. They go all the way to the top. They're screwed to the screwed to the wall. I'm not going to focus too long on any one thing because I don't particularly want to show it to you. But here's something we've done as a stopgap measure here. We're eventually going to put a wooden strip or something here in front of these shelves. I've got lots of glass here. I've got canned pork and lots of dehydrated vegetables in cans. 
So what I did was uh, just screwed in a an eye bolt here, and I took some, um, I don't know what it's called, I guess bungee cord, and I looped it around this bolt, and then I wrapped it around the post and uh, looped it over there. So at least I've got, and this is pretty tight, um, got a little bit of a barrier there. If there's just a little bit of shucking, uh, I'm probably going to be okay. I'm going to come back and put cardboard in between all of the jars, and if I can, uh, move them lower, uh, if that's at all possible. Uh, but at least I'll have a little bit of bearing, uh, barrier, or a little, yeah, a barrier to keep them from falling off, if there's just a little bit of trembling. Uh, but I've got glass, glass everywhere, like you probably do too. You'll see some sitting up there on that high shelf. On the very highest shelf, I try to keep very light cans of dehydrated uh, food. So that's pretty much what's up there. Also up high, I have uh, boxes of tissue and things like that. So that's my recommendation. You put the, the lightest things you can at the very top. Anyway, I'm working on moving it all around so I can get the, the stuff that's most breakable to the bottom. Let's go to another room. I'll show you something else. Now, uh, my food storage area is a work in progress because I'm shuffling everything around. One of the things I'm doing is I'm moving my glass home canned goods down to the lowest shelf I possibly can uh, in any storage area I'm using. Here you see some uh, canned chili and some canned chicken breast and some canned butter. I'm moving them down and putting them low. I'm also storing them in the original cases if I can. If not, I'm getting other cardboard boxes and putting dividers between each of the jars so that if any shaking occurs, they'll not rattle together. Things like ketchup and syrup, I'm putting in uh, tubs if I can. Molasses, that's something else that uh, needs to be stored in a better box, but at least I'm getting them low where I want them. And I'm going to uh, work this week to try to get it finished up if I can. Okay. Here I am in my washroom. And these nice cabinets uh, were here when I moved in. I love them and I didn't need them uh, for anything pertaining to wash particularly. So I started storing some canned goods in here. If you can see, I can't get this cabinet open because right here I've installed childproof latches. Now I have no little children in my house that I'm trying to keep out of the cabinet, but I'm trying to keep my glass jars in. If there were any rattling around, I want to be sure that cabinet stays closed and I have installed them on every cabinet in here. And you'll see that it's just full of all home canned goods and so is the so is the third cabinet over here. Now you see something else that looks a little peculiar probably to you. Right here is a jar of partial jar of dehydrated bananas. You see this funny looking thing. What I do, and I'm trying to get as many of them as I can. When my husband wears out a toe or a heel in a tube sock, I take that thing and I cut it into two or three sections, cutting the foot off and just taking that top band. And I put a little collar around my canned goods. See them up there? Or my, my jarred goods, my home canned goods. And the great thing about it is, when I go to set this in here, you can hear, well this one's hitting this one. But I can, I can hit them together and there's no glass on glass because what's happening is the tube socks are, are protecting the jars. So what I do, I may not do them on every one, but I'll come in here and put one on here so that, so that these three jars are protected. I'm trying to get enough socks to get them, to get them all done. Um, I think it's going to help. But what really helps is the childproof latches on these cabinets because if there's just a moderate amount of shaking, those cabinets aren't coming open. Okay, here's one last really cheapo recommendation. Uh, because I can't get my husband to wear out tube socks fast enough, uh, here's something else I thought of and it works pretty well. 
and you can even get rubber bands that are wider with this. If you take your jars and you put a rubber band at the top and a rubber band at the bottom, it doesn't have to be every one, it can be every other jar on a shelf, then when you hit those two jars up, up against each other, that, those rubber bands act like a bumper and you can't hear, well I did there because I hit really hard, but, but um, and, my, and my table's uneven. Uh, it's so old and, and warped it's uneven. It's about a hundred year old table, but uh, yeah, you can tell, and I'm and I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it pretty seriously, but those rubber bands work as a bumper, and it's a great thing to do. And you get those cheap at an office supply place. Just put them on your jars and give yourself just a little bit of insurance. The other thing, just a reminder: if you're storing your jars in cases or cardboard boxes, go ahead and cut some cardboard up and slip that in between each jar, just a little straight piece in between each jar, and you'll keep them bumping together. Uh, if you have food in glass in glass jars and cabinets. Child safety locks work great. Uh, and get your canned goods and your heavy goods, like your heavy number 10 cans, as low as you possibly can. You also need to be cautious if you're stacking buckets, if you're stacking five and six gallon buckets high, uh, especially in, if there's in a room where there are children or there will be people, uh, people sleeping. Uh, you don't want to be doing that. Uh, if you're, if you're, there's even the remotest chance of the ground trimmering where you live, you want to take every precaution you can. Uh, if you're like me and think that you're not in an area where that's uh, generally prone to happen, um, I will remind you that things are happening everywhere in places where they weren't expected to happen. Um, so just take that into consideration. Better safe than sorry. Uh, if you're like me, you've worked hard dehydrating food. You've worked hard canning food. I just got through. I uploaded a video uh, Saturday on canning butter. I've got tons of that. It would make a terrible mess if it crashed on the floor and the uh, lids were to happen to pop open. The other thing I will tell you is I recommended, um, I don't know if it was on one of my videos or commenting on somebody else's uh, channel, but I recommended that after you can uh, your home canned goods that you remove the rings and store them without the rings uh, because you can tell if food has gone gone bad because that lid will pop off. The seal would, the, uh, the ring would keep it on. But if the food has gone bad uh, and it's set there for any length of time, the gases that build up from botulism will pop the lid off and that way you'll know it's bad. Uh, I'm retracting that statement. Uh, as I prepare for the ground to trimmer uh, around me, if that is to happen, I've put rings back on my jars. Now, I still recommend that after you can, that you wash your jars thoroughly with soapy water, uh, let them dry, and let your rings dry too, because you don't want rust to build up under that. Uh, would it matter on something like a vacuum sealed dry corn? No, that's okay. That's not a big deal because if that, if this one I haven't vacuum sealed yet, but if that were to fall off a shelf, I mean, yeah, the corn would go out, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't make too big a mess. On something like this, canned tomatoes, canned butter, canned chili, canned chicken breast, I would put the rings on if, if you think there is any chance that there might be uh, any kind of shaking of the ground around you. Uh, anyway, just as I, that's just uh, something I have rethought as of late, and I've gone back and put put rings on some of my things. If I'm going to use this butter uh, in a few days, I can still take the ring off and set it on my kitchen counter and let it sit there for a couple of days. If there's any, if there's any pardon my dogs, they must have heard a cat. If there's any kind of problem with this food, uh, then that that lid will still go ahead and pop off if it's without the ring for a couple of days. Anyway, I hope this helps somebody. I hope this saves you some heartache. Uh, I hope nothing ever happens to all the work we've done, but you know uh, the old saying that we hope for the best, uh, prepare for the worst. If you have any questions, just give me a PM. Bye now.